Hey guys, thank you for watching my last video and for leaving me your questions. And as promised, here is the special episode where I answer all your queries. So let's get on with the questions. All right. So the first question is from Pranav Nair and he asked, what should an upcoming band go for? A debut EP or an album? Does it make a difference? Okay, so even though that has nothing to do with earning a living being a metal musician, I'm going to answer it anyway. And I think the first thing any band should be doing is writing a good song. Forget planning an EP or an album or anything. Just start and write some good music. Practice your ass off, jam continuously, write a couple of good songs and then perhaps get into the studio and record like a demo, I would say. Maybe just one single or two or three songs if you can afford it. Also, I would definitely recommend recording one song well rather than recording three songs very averagely. So I would say write that one kick ass song, record it really well and then take it from there. The next question comes from Akhil and he says, I've seen some bands release their albums individually. Could you please tell how that works? Do the bands themselves make the CD and all that stuff? What merits, demerits does this have? So yes, Akhil, basically it is called DIY, which means do it yourself. And this is how 90% of the bands need to do their stuff. You write your music, you spend your money and record it, you manufacture your CDs, you sell them at shows, you release it through iTunes, Spotify, etc. In fact, today there are so many tools available to bands and obviously the merits are that you have complete control. The truth is nobody is going to do this for you unless they see some potential to earn money and that very rarely happens to new bands. So once you've done this for yourself, you kind of have a hang of the business part of things too and you can make better decisions as well. Also, this is a really good reality check for most musicians and this is kind of, if they're able to do this, they know that this is something they want to pursue later on. The next question is from Manas Joshi and he asks, what are the things we can do to maintain the balance of money while in the process of being successful as a band? For example, saving money from your salary for equipment, recording, etc. So my answer is treat your band like a business. What that means is like any business, you start off with some investment, which is recording your demo, your single and publicizing it and trying to get the band known so that when it is known, people are willing to pay money for it, whether it's tickets or CDs or merchandise. And obviously you try and budget and you balance that out. You know, so if you're a band that can sell a hundred copies and make 50, 60,000, don't go and spend two lakhs and record an album and lose 140,000 rupees. You're just going to go into debt and then obviously you'll have to pay from your salary. Now that may be okay to a certain point, but at some point you're going to have to pay your bills and you know, your rent and whatever else your expenses are. And you would not ideally want to dip into your personal savings for the band. The band should be a self-sustaining enterprise on its own. If not money making, at least self-sustaining. That's my way of looking at it. Of course, there are bands that will go and spend 8 to 10 lakhs recording when they can't even sell 120 copies of their album. There are bands that will blow up cash because they want to satisfy some creative urge. There's nothing wrong with that. But from a business perspective and a long term perspective, that is definitely a no no in my books. The next question is from a guy called Indian Metalhead. He asks why metalheads are so less in India. Most Indian metalheads are themselves musicians. Indians don't listen to metal because they don't know about it. Even they know they be like this is noise, I like honey singing. Blah blah. You get the point. And I said this last time in the video also. Why are we so obsessed with Honey Singh and Bollywood? Why are metalheads in India so obsessed with converting people into metal? We are not Christianity. We don't go around doing that. Nor are we Islam or any other religion for that matter. We are metalheads. We like the music because we connect to it. If other people don't, then that's their loss. It's not our problem. Stop it. It's really starting to annoy me now. So anyway, the answer to that question is well, because it's not everyone's cup of tea and at some point I do believe there will be more metalheads. The scene is going to grow. So just wait and let it happen organically. The Indian metalhead is back with another question and he says many parents say stop listening to metal. It makes you angry slash mad or metalheads are satanic. That's not even a question my friend, but I will answer that because I know what you're trying to ask me. And the point is this guys, your parents first of all are paranoid about you smoking, drinking and doing drugs. 
and which in most cases you are doing because that is the age when all the kids want to experiment with all this shit you know you want to drink you want to smoke you want to go hang with your pals you want to smoke weed you want to pop e i don't know i never did it because i didn't feel the need to i i was happy the way i was but whatever that's your problem and the thing is it's your job to talk to your parents rationally to not drink to not smoke to not do drugs and tell them to trust you and explain to them that it's a form of music now if you don't talk to your parents if you shut your door if you blast your music if you bang your head if you come home drunk and stoned you are going to have a problem at home but if you are studying and you're balancing your life most parents are okay with it if you sit and rationally talk and explain it to them yes there are exceptions to this rule sometimes you're just stuck with parents who are unwilling to listen to you in that case go ahead and just listen to your music on your headphones man and good luck to you the next question is from Arka Prava and he asks do you think if bands sign up with some major artist management agencies abroad they would get proper recognition overseas and make money while touring also you think more crowdfunded events can help the scene grow in India let me break this up into two parts first of all why will any artist management agency want to sign you this is a fundamental problem that Indian metalheads and even generally people don't seem to understand why should people be doing these favors for you and what makes your band different than any other band why are you special and why should they take pity on you and sign you the thing is if you are making fantastic music if you are working hard at the right point in time you will get the right opportunities if you are working for it there is absolutely no reason that an artist management agency will sign an Indian band uh, unless you know they are offering you something different for example an artist management agency in the UK would see some logic in signing a Raghu Dixit project because he embodies Indian culture in his music he dresses like that his whole act is naturally Indian it is something new for them there is potential there to exploit but if you're an Indian band wearing leather and denim or wearing costumes like DR does even you're not really offering them anything new so they're not going to just be like oh we'll sign you because you're Indian they may sign a DR and a Kryptos because they see that we've worked hard we've invested money we've toured in Europe we've started building a fan base and then they say okay this is it this is a hard-working band they are worth signing up but otherwise they're not going to just come to India scout for talent and take you back and like suddenly everything will work and about touring Europe I said I will do a separate video for that and that will be out next week so look out for that now about crowdfunding yes that is going to work for a certain amount of time and it will work for certain events and certain activities uh, it is definitely something to explore but again if you're a new band crowdfunding is not going to work unless you have a decent fan base willing to put money behind you so you got to rely on your own money and your own finances so that's my opinion on crowdfunding so the next question is from 9zone123 and he says yes but what you have offered is a financial perspective what if a band tries to create metal by making it appeal to the masses and the local audience do you think it might be possible then Bam! wrong answer buddy no that doesn't work first of all metal by its very definition its very sound its very essence is not meant to appeal to the masses it has never been that it never will be that you know I have seen all these metal bands and metalheads think oh if we sing in Hindi we will connect to the masses no the masses are not going to connect to that they are not into the sound of distorted guitars and double bass drums and growling vocals you can growl in any language they don't give a shit it's only when people are accustomed to the sound of rock or metal music will they start to relate to the lyrical and the language aspect of it but till then no it's not possible I don't think it's going to change a thing unless you are Raghu Dixit you have no chance in hell the next question is from Arnav Mitra is it only the metal bands or the scene is any good for rock bands same thing buddy music that is not everyone's cup of tea singing in English all I guess all right a bunch of questions from Anup KR the first one he asked me is are you going to give up am I gonna give up making music no probably never uh, am I gonna give up playing live I don't know am I gonna give up the hope of ever making a living doing metal music with only demonic resurrection probably but I will try and find that balance in my life where I can you know kind of make the money I deserve to earn and at the same time play the music that I want to play and you know tour with demonic resurrection uh, I probably again have to do a special video for this but you'll find it on my channel soon enough 
His second question is, do you have a day job? If yes, what is it? Yes, I have a day job. I work with Fatado's Music as a artist relations manager. It is a work from home position right now and it's a bare minimum amount that I earn, but it's good enough for me right now. Uh, what I will say at this point is I ensure that everything else I do, whether it's Demonic Resurrection uh, or any of my other projects or even my cooking show Headbangers Kitchen or even uh, my studio, Demonic Studios, I try and follow a break-even model. His third question is, how long do you plan on sticking in there fighting to make your dreams happen? Do you think indie music in general is going to progress in India? Yes, the music scene will progress in India. How long, how far, I don't know, but it will progress. And how long do I plan to keep doing this? I don't know till I wake up in the morning and I feel like not doing it. Till that moment happens, I will keep doing this. And the final question is from Argya Deep Mitra and he asked, can you think of any solutions to this problem? Honestly, at this juncture, there is no immediate solution. However, there is potential in the next 50 to 100 years for this to change. I will take a couple of hours to dissect and explain that. So I will do it in another video at some point. But thank you all for watching. If you have any more questions, leave me a comment below. And I will do another episode where I answer all the questions if there are enough questions. And please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel and share this video on social media if you think it's useful. So till the next video, cheers and stay demonic. I will see you soon.